Only in New York would a $400,000 renovation budget be considered tight. Since we added two bedrooms, we really added a $2 million value to the apartment. That's what these designers had to work with inside three multi-million dollar Manhattan apartments. I call it as I see it. I better not be wearing my bathrobe because <laughs> I have mirror underneath this countertop. As the designers take the hot seat. It's such a missed opportunity. Not in the living room. Don't be so sensitive. It's OK. Pretty sure I have a hate relationship with it. Is he kidding? Your project did not get biggest bang for the buck. You can find an entire world of design in one place, New York City. But living here is not cheap. The median sale price of a Manhattan apartment is just over $900,000. And if you're willing to renovate, prepare for a budget that includes contractor insurance costs, street closures for deliveries, and limited working hours. It's not easy, but we found three designers that do it every day. What are we going to do? We're going to prepare everything on wallpaper. Guillaume Gente brings an artist background to each project. This, OK, this is the best. If your design needs a signature piece, Gail Shields Miller is the one to find it. And whether it's a five-star hotel or a New York apartment, Anthony D. Giuseppe is all about opulence. They're here today in hopes of winning $10,000 to donate to charity. Well, this is a first on Bang for Your Buck. We are looking at major renovations in New York apartments. But it's not the homeowners we're critiquing, it's you, the designers. Now, with me today is realtor MJ Cody. As you know, this is a city where everything goes. We're going to be judging your major renovations using these three criteria. Did you use top-end materials? Do you have an ideal space plan? And MJ, no matter what the square footage of your client's home, they want plenty of storage. Are you guys ready to get started? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Guillaume and John, we're going to start with you. OK. Cool. Parisian designer Guillaume Gente and his assistant John McMahon have an artistic flair. Are we going to be uh, tracing this on the side? Their artwork is the finishing touch inside their big budget projects. To get things done in the city, it's crazy. It's crazy. You have a, a different mentality here because you can't build out and add on a master bathroom or master bedroom because there's not the space for it. People are going to work and do all the work in the apartment because buying and moving some, somewhere else is going to be even crazy. more expensive. He's very excited about his latest project where he added two bedrooms and a whole lot of value. In New York City, you look at an apartment and it's usually one million per bedrooms. So if you have a two bedroom, it's a two million dollar apartment. So here, since we added two bedrooms, we really added a two million dollar value to the apartments. Yeah. They used to have three living rooms. With the family, she realized she needed a big kitchen. We did this, the big island. The whole island is filled up with uh, hidden secrets. We did uh, a lot of like hidden push-up cabinets. Everything in this kitchen, everything in this apartment, pretty much is all about how we can hide all that stuff. This is the, the office section, and this used to be actually the kitchen. Here in the center, we have printer and everything concealed. This is the main thing in New York City. You just can't just have everything out. It's like easier to just have the storage and just hide it. Huge. Is it Easter? Are they looking for eggs? <laughs> I live in New York part time, and I can say that this is one of the largest islands I have ever seen in Manhattan. Whoops! It's huge. I don't know that I've ever said a kitchen is too big, but in this case, I think I have to. That's what they wanted. They, they were tired of that tiny kitchen. They were to the big, big kitchen. What it does is it kind of creates a very small living space. If you don't want to make it smaller, you want to keep the same size, just shift it over, pull it down, you know, I wish I could do it, uh, and occupy the space. Mm. Right now, what I have here is just dead space. It was a little bit of a miss here. I think this is actually a huge miss. And the second huge miss for me is the fact that over here, we've only got two bar stools. Oh, it could only fit two. Take this storage, move it from here, put it on this side, and give me two additional bar stools. 
This building used to actually be a department store. It was built in the early 1900s, and so it really makes for a cool living space. I always appreciate these, these old spaces that have been re-adapted. Look at these gorgeous floors. Those are the original floors, right? The original They're floors. They're beautiful. And I'm so grateful that Guillaume and John, the designers, decided to keep it. Thank you very much. And they also did the added thing of staining it dark. When you stain a floor dark and you keep the envelope light, it makes it feel larger. It's a beautiful home. And they appreciated the fact that this is such a tremendous volume, so they put in big pieces of art. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it draws your eye up. It makes a space that's already a tremendous volume feel even bigger. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, there we go. All right, in this very small space, they have crammed so much storage. I mean, they could rent the storage space out. <laughs> Look at all that storage. It's definitely impressive. This might be my favorite storage solution of all. Underneath the stairs. In here, you've got a bike, you've got a stroller, you've got a ladder, things that you don't want to see, but you have to have. Almost a storage facility. <laughs> I have two kids, but I have three strollers. It takes up half of my apartment. I wish I had that. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I'm curious about what's behind this. Vern, just hit that switch. I'm dying to know. What's behind curtain number one? <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I feel like I just walked into the Maxwell Smart movie. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> the built-in cabinets are beautiful as well. They match the cabinets we saw in the kitchen. There's a tremendous amount of storage and enough workspace for two people. Well, it helps when people arrive and you don't want to see people because, you know, yeah. you're in the middle of doing your bills. You know, you don't want people to see it. Yeah. I see that they've got like several bedrooms in here. Were these here before? These were not here before. Creating two additional rooms opens you up to a much larger pool of buyers, larger families, and it's bang for your buck. I thought it was a great apartment. Um, I agree about the kitchen. Don't you think yeah. it was big? I felt like I could get up there with 10 of my friends and do like a rock out. It was a, a ballroom size counter. There's yeah. no doubt about that. I thought it was really a beautiful and exceptional apartment. If it was an apartment for me, I would, would want much more living space to lounge in. I think that was fun. Yeah. I mean, it went overall went, went well. I knew it was going to be said, so <laughs> I was like, all right, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. I was like, I knew it. This is one of the most amazing views I've ever seen, and all of the seating faces the other way. I think he's right. New York is a very vibrant city. It's always, it's always a very young city when it comes to design. You have access to almost everything available in the entire world. We always try to keep real, really on top of what's brand new, what's coming out, what's cutting edge, and how to enmesh that into our design work. Anthony D. Giuseppe's passion for design has him working all over the world, not just in residential, but in five-star hotels and spas as well. His client, Joel Marcus, had very strong opinions on how to spend $400,000. So I was lucky to get Joel as a client because it was really a chance to do unusual things. He was like, I don't want anything that I've seen before in another apartment. And like most of us, Joel considers himself an armchair designer. I told Anthony that everything had to have texture. And I didn't mean texture just that you could look at, but I want a texture that you could feel. These are actually shell pieces that are put together on sections of wall covering that was then put in pieces that they were like sections about this big. The lighting was very important. I wanted to always have regular lighting and then to have something that I could amp it up. This is the remote for the lighting. You can speed it up faster, you can change the mode, which is more of a disco, <laughs> and really create a different mood each time. No one has a dining room like this. And, and I think it's because they're not bold enough or not daring enough to do it. The mirrors were originally in the apartment when we started, and we decided that we were going to keep them in there because it made the room much bigger. We wanted to supersize the view. He is very happy with it, result, um, and that really makes me happy. Wow. Wow.
I have never seen so many high-end materials in one kitchen. This is the best of the best. There's not one element here that's even on that second rung. It's all top rung material. Oh. However, I think my buyers are going to be confused when they walk into this space. They don't know if they're entering a 50s diner or an episode of the Brady Bunch. There is a talented designer at work here. All of these materials, in my opinion, actually work really well together. But I just wish that they had refrained from using all of these materials in one space. It's just overstimulation. We have this counter up here, which is nice. You know, great breakfast spot, right? Sure, First beautiful. thing in the morning. But guess what? I better not be wearing my bathrobe because <laughs> I have mirror underneath this countertop all the way down to the floor. Exhibitionist. <laughs> if you want a reflective material down here, take the same mother of pearl wall detail and put it down here. Wow. Okay. Beautiful view. Great views. All right, I am really, really perplexed because this is one of the most amazing views I've ever seen in any Manhattan unit. And all of the seating faces the other way. When I sit down, I'm looking at a wall. I mean, a wall with a mirror, but still, my back is completely to this incredible multi-million dollar view. Every Manhattan buyer is looking for the view. It's just a matter of can they afford it or not. So show it off. That's where the money is. The toughest decision we had to make was a question of the mirrors or not the mirrors. I totally understand the train of thought that you want to have mirror to double your view. You want to take the light, bounce it back. All of that is spot on. But instead of having it be floor to ceiling wall applied, you should really frame it out. Hang it on the wall, or if it's too large to hang on the wall, lean it against the wall. Putting that frame around the mirror makes it timeless and classic. This, unfortunately, just looks dated. You know, everything they said about the furniture place it could all be changed just moving the furniture around. It just doesn't make sense to spend the amount of money that our designers and homeowners did to do all of these gorgeous high end built ins and not have storage. It's such a missed opportunity. Not in the living room. There isn't any storage around the perimeter. Storage is so important here. I think he's right. You should have, we could have had some storage in there. Joel and his designer, Anthony, did such a nice job with picking high-end materials. In particular, I love these floors. These are wider planks. This is quarter sawn, rift cut oak. And it's stained, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, these floors, unlike the mirrors, will never go out of style. Bravo. Good, good advice. <laughs> That's a good thing you said. What is on this column? Unfortunately, this is exactly what you do not want to do. And that column was something that we spent two years arguing over how we were going to make that interesting. Look up above. Is that lighting? It's psychedelic lighting. What is that? We're going to get down. We're going to get down. I wish I could dance better. <laughs> I mean, it's a gorgeous room. Why put this eyesore in the middle of it? Give us some sheetrock. That's all we're looking for. Paint it the color of the walls and let it be. Perfect. Exactly. All the things that I don't like about that side of the room are actually working over here. I love the fact that there are so many clever storage solutions. These Macassar ebony cabinets, for example, hide a bar inside. This one's got a television inside of it. This is really clever. These are the kinds of clever storage solutions that people in Manhattan are really looking for. That's why you don't need it in the, along the Q1 windows. Uh, don't be so sensitive. It's OK. No, I'm just saying. You don't need it in the windows. Overall, I look at this and I think, expensive. Oh, yes, it was. They have used top-end materials throughout, and it's really, really evident. You did good. Now, if it's your style or if it's not, it's a whole other story. Exactly. But uh, I think de design-wise, it was well done. Different strokes for different folks. That's right. all I have to say, really. But for me, it was visual overstimulation. Visual overstimulation. I would have run out of that kitchen in a half a minute. I mean, you are standing in some of the most expensive real estate in the world. Every square inch counts. I mean, this space is really laid out very, very, very well.
If you want to learn about design, head to any neighborhood in New York City. Designer Gail Shields Miller is known for her eclectic approach to furnishings. Oh, I adore that chair. That's a classic. You can find anything in New York, tough as it is, and you have to be tough as nails, it's here. With the help of her assistant, Daniel Van Hall, their approach to the Manhattan Project was a mix of the glamorous past with today's design trends. We were lucky that it had good bones. She was gorgeous, but you couldn't tell. This was a commercial building, so there's nothing special about the windows. But now does, nobody looks at them like they're regular windows because they have these gorgeous dresses around each, on either side of them. One great addition that we made to the apartment was this great butcher block top. It creates a great transition between the dining room and the kitchen and another surface for preparing foods, buffet. really serves the client well. Okay, so now we're in the master bedroom, and this was the piece de resistance. If any part of the apartment was naked, this room was naked, naked. We did many of the things we did in the other rooms by dropping ceilings, putting oversized moldings, which I adore. We stole from the little bedroom in the middle and gave a lot of space to the master bedroom. That is a view. Wow. Wow. Uh, gorgeous. Right off the bat, I see one storage unit that I am absolutely in love with and one that I'm not so sure about. I knew oh, he would say that. You, right? I think this is so well done. This is high-end material. This is ceruced oak, really high quality and gorgeous. And I love the smart use of opaque glass. I am not so sure about this one. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have a hate relationship with it. But it would have been boring just to put another cabinet there. It's an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful piece of furniture, but it doesn't provide you with that essential, functional storage that everybody in Manhattan is looking for. I, I knew they wouldn't like that unit. I just knew it. I can live with that. This is a great, great building, Burn. It used to actually be the Brunswick Hotel many years ago. It was built in the early 1900s, and the best thing about this building and location is that it's overlooking Madison Square Park. This is a great room. Yeah. I mean, you are standing in some of the most expensive real estate in the world. Every square inch counts, so it has to be top quality. Even that second tier quality doesn't count here. Hope they notice the window treatments, huh? I'm not so sure I would have picked those curtains because those curtains are really full. They really billow and they kind of come into the space too much. That's what makes horse racing. Additionally, I think I would have gone for vertical stripes. Those horizontal stripes accentuate the fact that I used to have a high ceiling and now it's a little bit lower. Oh, there is a table that actually seats eight in Manhattan. Who can do that? A giant buffet. Plenty of seating. I mean, this space is really laid out very, very, very well. I like that. By adding this, this teak piece right over here, you now have bar height seating. It adds a function to this space that it previously didn't have. Everybody loves that. This addition really adds a lot of value to the space. This is a bedroom? It was a bedroom. We turned it into yeah, a den. It was a bedroom. It turned into a den. I love a space that works extra hard. And this is not only an office, it's also a, a second guest bedroom, which I think is wonderful. Agree, agree, agree. This is some of the nicest carpet I have ever seen. I mean, you can tell it's absolutely gorgeous, but I would have preferred to have seen the hardwood brought throughout the entire unit. There's a wood floor underneath it. If somebody moves in, they want to pull it up. Buyers in New York do not like carpet in general. Hardwood floors would have been a much, much better choice. It was cost effective. Definitely cost effective. School wallpaper. This could on its own qualify as an apartment. I mean, come yes, on. Absolutely. <laughs> there are apartments in Manhattan that are smaller than this for sure. <laughs> the thing that I worry about though is the fact that, you know, they didn't really maximize what they could have done with this space. This to me is frustrating because this could have easily been made additional storage. It's almost hangar depth. I think they're over focused on storage, to be really honest with you. <laughs> This is a little storage right here, but guess what? If you combined this space with all of this, you've got a whole nother closet. And if you don't need more room for clothes, then use it for something else. But right now, it's holding a little footstool. 
Hands down, you cannot deny, this is a beautiful space and it looks like a professional design team. Really had a lot of fun in here. The apartment looked great and um, you know, I'm going to be positive about it. She was able to squeeze everything uh, in a small space. In a small space, I thought she did great. They're all three different apartments, which is kind of interesting. To be successful in New York, you have to be good. So, who's it going to be? So this was a lot of fun. We got to see three multi-million dollar spaces all done by designers. All three were really hot properties in prime New York City locations. As someone who's been in interior design for a long time, I know it's really important to listen to your client. You want to give them the best possible version of their vision. But at the end of the day, I think I know who should win. Well, I ran all the numbers, and I think we are on the exact same page. Now, everybody knows that New York is the most competitive interior design market in the country. And to be successful in New York, you have to be good. So, congratulations. Anthony and Joel, every square inch of your home is covered in high-end, beautiful materials. However, we felt that in many instances, there were too many different materials in one space. And we wish the space planning had been a little better. I'm sorry to tell you that your project did not get the biggest bang for the buck. That leaves Guillaume and John and Gail and Daniel. Guillaume and John, we felt that the placement of the island was a huge mistake. It really impeded the space plan. However, we felt that you provided many creative storage solutions and you were very thoughtful in your use of materials. Gail and Daniel, we really would have liked to have seen more creative storage solutions from you. However, we felt that of the three projects, you had the best space plan. And you used materials beautifully. So, who's it gonna be? Congratulations, Guillaume and John. I just wanna hug everybody, I'm so excited. This is so much fun. Guillaume and John ultimately won because they provided so many creative storage solutions. They handled materials so thoughtfully. And from a real estate perspective, they created more living space. This $10,000 is really going to help this charity buy supplies so all those children can be able to express themselves without. And that's very important. 